I've been getting uh, comments on this Ford Edge. I made a couple of videos on it for repairs that I've done to it quite a while ago. Not a real long time ago, but a while back. And I did ball joint repair and brake power booster repair on this vehicle. And the commentary is concerning the power booster repair. And this car, the power booster is buried way back here behind the battery. And off to the side a little bit. And as you can see right there, there's the master cylinder. And from what I gather from the comments, <clears throat> everybody has their own way of repairing things. And this guy is saying, remove the battery and the battery tray. And obviously, you know, the air intake and the housing. Okay, I did all that. The lower box. Got all that out of the way. But from what I can understand from him commenting, he was saying, remove the throttle body. Okay, this work's already been done. The repair was a success. I've done several more since then. We're all good that way. <clears throat> but I've, everybody has their own way of doing stuff. And I didn't want to remove the throttle body because car repair can be a lot like surgery. The less invasive you are with the surgery, the greater chance you have a success and a patient recovery. So what I did with this vehicle, because it's set so far back, besides removing these items all here, okay, Plus, I got big hands. Okay, so I need some room. This guy, from what I understand, was saying that it's not necessary to remove this plastic right here, which gives you about eight, nine extra inches of working space. Plus, you can see much easier that power booster, which you can hardly even see from this angle. Okay. So, he's also saying to disconnect, disconnect that brake power booster. When you do that, which is what I was repairing, to also disconnect and remove the master cylinder. Now, the problem with that is then you have to bench bleed the master cylinder and then you gotta go around all four corners on the car. And you have to open up the bleeder valves. Now on some cars, the bleeder valves are rusted shut. Okay, even if you apply heat to them, they may or may not open. So you're opening yourself to much more labor and more repairs that aren't necessary. You wanna do the minimal, like, you want to do the minimal invasive type repair possible so that the cost is contained to the broken item as much as possible. So like removing something like this, okay, that, that cap was never on there since, you know, the repair. So that had been missing already. Removing this is not removing anything that's critical to the functionary of the vehicle. So taking it apart and putting it back on is not going to affect the way it runs. If you make a mistake or if you don't put, if you're missing a, a screw or, or whatnot, it's not critical to the function of the car. Now, when you start taking the throttle body off, then, you know, you're dealing with gaskets and unplugging wiring you know, risking putting stress on wiring because the guy was like saying, 
I'm putting unnecessary stress on the brake lines leading up to the master cylinder, which if the brake lines are in reasonably decent shape, you're not going to put any undue stress on it. You're not going to let any air into the system. Trust me, I've done maybe five of these now, six, six, yeah. And I've done them all the same way. So I perfected the way of doing it, kind of, for myself. Removing these items right here is the most important thing. Take these, the air box, all that that's related to it, the battery, the tray, <clears throat> and this setup right here, the wipers, all the plastic that's related to that. It makes for a much more simplified and less adventurous repair. All right, I hope that answers a lot of the other questions. I'm sure now you guys have other questions like, why does it look like the car hasn't been used in a while? Well, in my area, there's a emissions testing. So it's got a misfire and I don't know if it's these ones right here or the ones that are hard to get, that, get at back there. which I believe if it's the ones back there, you have to remove the air intake. And there, there you go, you're opening yourself to more invasive repair. So when I get around to it, I'm gonna check those ones first, obviously. And uh, if it's none of them, obviously I know what I gotta do. I gotta remove intake manifold, which I wasn't looking forward to doing and besides it's got some other suspension issues and stuff like that and ball tires needs needs brake pads and stuff but yeah i'm gonna sell it i let my kid drive around here he had a construction uh cone put a dent in it so it hasn't been used in a while <clears throat> it hasn't been used at all since Ford installed the brand new airbags and stuff like that they actually came to our house and they put a brand new airbag it only took the guy about 15 minutes to put new airbags in he came right to the house. Pretty cool. I don't know, just... Oh, the battery is dead. I had it on the battery charger, too. Yeah, these tires, I mean, uh, I got it on the mini spare. There's a little body damage back there. You know, 175 days till Christmas. Rest easy there, Sandy.